Thanks. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on uh, introductions, but uh, I'm principal planner with Community, Envir uh, Community Planning and Environmental Associates over in Schoharie County. Um, so uh, let me wait to get the slides up. And uh, I'm going to use my 20 minutes to uh, try and impress upon you the importance of a comprehensive plan in your community. For all of the things that the other speakers are going to talk about, it really is the basis and the place that you absolutely have to spend time paying attention to to make sure you have your comprehensive plan in good shape to support um, all of the other land use regulations and programs that you might want to do. For related to gas drilling, industrialization, agricultural protection, anything else you want to do in the community, the comprehensive plan is the place to start. Um, I like to start my talks on comprehensive plan with these two statements um, because they really are the truth. The comprehensive plan is your community's roadmap. It tells you where you want to go. And if you don't know where you want to go, you're never going to get there. So it's really important to keep in mind as you go along that the, comp the, the role of the comprehensive plan is to tell you what your road is and how to get from A to Z on that road map. And that's why it's, um, I think it's one of the most important tools that we need to pay attention to. The comprehensive plan is usually a written document. I recommend it being a written document, although there's really nothing in the law that says it has to be written. Um, it outlines the goals and objectives and vision and strategies for your town. You can think of it as the policy statement for your town. It is the document that your planning boards, your town boards, and all of the other work that you do, um, it's, it's your guide. When you make a decision, it's your comprehensive plan that you should be looking at to say, if we make this decision, is it going to get our community closer to where we want to go or not? So it's really your, your guidepost in um, not just planning, but in all sorts of aspects from infrastructure to recreation in your community. Comprehensive plans are, um, uh, you're authorized to do a comprehensive plan from New York State Town Law 272A or Village Law 7722. Um, it lay, those laws lay out the general procedure and the general um, content of what should be in a comprehensive plan. New York State does not mandate that villages and towns have a comprehensive plan, unlike other parts in the United States where local communities are required to have a comprehensive plan. In New York State, it's not required, but it's certainly recommended, and it's certainly been recognized uh, throughout um, a long history of court cases that the comprehensive plan is the basis for your regulatory control. So it certainly holds a lot of importance in uh, in the whole scheme of things. The comprehensive plan, when it comes to regulating land use, you should think of your comprehensive plan as the rationale for um, land use regulations. Let me just see by a show of hand which of your communities have zoning. Okay, so there's quite a few that don't have zoning. Um, how about site plan review? Okay, so some of the ones that don't have zoning have site plan review. If you're familiar with your local laws, you will notice that the very beginning of the law has a purpose statement, and it tells you why you're regulating something. Those purpose statements should be completely tied to your comprehensive plan. It is really your comprehensive plan that establishes what you want to accomplish, and that is transferred into the purpose statements of your regulations. Um, and the reason that the comprehensive plan is, um, lays out those things uh, is that it prevents arbitrary decisions from being taken place in the future. Um, it overcomes issues of landowner rights because it, it really is looking at establishing the community desires and goals for what is going to be the basis for the health, safety, and welfare of the whole community. Um, it articulates the reasons why some properties are handled differently than others. It's in your comprehensive plan that you establish what you have in your community, why it's important to your community, and why you have to treat 
one area or one land use differently than others. You have that rationale is laid out and articulated in your comprehensive plan. One of the things that we, that I look for when I'm doing my work and working with communities on both this issue as well as any other issue is, is the comprehensive plan well considered? There are a lot of comprehensive plans out there that are old, that were done like in the 70s, oftentimes they were just a group of people uh, sitting around a table, or sometimes a consultant would come to the community and drive around and write a comprehensive plan. It's not to say that that's not well considered, but given the stakes that we have related to heavy industrialization and gas drilling, the, I feel that it's really important to have a really well considered plan. It needs to reflect the needs of the community, it needs to act to protect the public interest. It needs to show that you as a community have given some forethought to the issues facing your community. It's developed with a careful and deliberate review that involves the public. So it's not just one group of people saying we want this or we want that. Um, and it looks, the comprehensive plan, um, when it's well considered, um, establishes a total planning strategy. So you take your current conditions, to the vision of your community, to the strategies of how you're going to obtain or attain that vision. It's those three pieces need to be addressed somehow in your comprehensive plan. What you've got, why it's important, and where you want to go, and how you're going to get there. Okay, and I kind of jumped ahead. This next slide kind of goes over that. Um, whether you have a two-page comprehensive plan or a hundred-page comprehensive plan, these elements should be written in there to support what you as a community want. A well articulated vision and your goals should be by topic. What do you want to say about the environment? What are your goals related to agriculture and economic development, infrastructure, housing and local government? If you are a community that sees yourself as a tourist community or primarily as an agricultural community, and your whole economy and way of life revolves around that point of view and that character of your community, then you need to state that and show why other things would interfere with that character of your community. You have to be specific about outlining those in your comprehensive plan. The last piece um, is the profile and inventory. Um, I like to be quite detailed, as detailed as we can get. Not all comprehensive plans have the ability or the funding to have lots of maps and lots of analysis. But when it comes to gas drilling and heavy industrialization or any kind of change in land use from a rural community or what we typically have around here, is you have to be as comprehensive in your inventory as time and budgets allow. Where are the water supplies? Where are your streams? What are the watersheds? And things like that. I'll have a slide in a minute about that. So add as much information as time and budgets allow into your town's profile and inventory, because that sets the stage of who you are as a community. Another important thing in your comprehensive plan is to involve your community in a meaningful way. And it's really hard to get people out. Now with this topic, people come out in droves, but the ordinary comprehensive plan when there's not a pressing ish, pressing issue it's really hard to get people involved so you got to try lots of things workshops meetings surveys websites with comments on it public meetings any way you can think of to get people involved is got to be into the mix um, you have to not just because it's that's the whole basis of a comprehensive plan is it's about the most democratic and ground up document I know. It's really grown from the whole community. But to show that you have had the whole community involved, and these are the conclusions that made. You want to regulate A, B, and C, or you want to do E, F, or G, you have to explain why you have reached that conclusion. And when you base that on community input, it makes that even stronger. Within the document, as I mentioned before, the profile and inventory is, is really important. This is a list of some of the things that are really relatively available for you 
Your counties probably have this data that they could either give you as a GIS layer for your own analysis, whether you do it yourself or you have a consultant, or many counties are willing to print these out for you. And so that's the first place that you can try to see whether they have that information. These in particular are important. I have almost, I have all of these in every comprehensive plan that we do. But for the topic related to heavy industrialization and gas drilling, these are the resources you want to identify so that you can draw the, the correlation between this is what we've got and this is what we're going to do about. So to have a map of where your wetlands and your floodplains, um, steep slopes and all of the things that influence water quality, economic conditions, that's something that you can, um, you can articulate in your plan, in your profile, where, what are the types of jobs, what are the land uses in the community, to again try and characterize your community. Um, Understanding the road conditions, the bridges, the traffic counts, Mike's going to get into that in more detail. But the comprehensive plan is the place to start understanding the infrastructure of your town. Um, the understanding the aquifers and the hydrology is information that is not typically available like slopes and wetlands and floodplains. Usually, um, I have found most locations we have to commission a special study that looks at geology and hydrology and well logs to characterize where the water is, how much water there is, what the quality of water there is. Um, but it's, and it, it can be more expensive, so a lot of communities don't do it. If you have the ability to look into mapping and understanding your recharge areas and the areas that are sensitive, now is the time to do it, and the comprehensive plan is the place to put it in. View sheds and scenic views is a community-driven process because view sheds are in the eyes of the beholder. Get the public involved to understand what are the scenic views, what is scenic, what, how are you describing your landscape. All of those things should be questions that are discussed, analyzed, and addressed in the comprehensive plan. Um, some of the things that the comprehensive plan should also do for you is to have some definitions. Um, and I don't mean like a dictionary kind of definition, but a description of these types of things. Um, what are your current land uses? What are your preferred land uses? Are you a rural community that you want to promote agriculture? Then describe what those farms are. Um, what is your character? Out of this whole list, the one thing that really needs to be described is what is your character? I go to all sorts of places and say, oh, well, we're a rural character. What does that mean? Put it into words. Ask the public. Describe what that cur current character is so that it's, it's crystal clear what you want for your community. And then the, the things that will come from that will make more sense. Identify your farmlands. Um, and, and a lot of this information is available through various resources online. You can go to the uh, DEC website, to their, their environmental mapper, and find out all sorts of information on uh, their site of species that have been found, archaeological areas, historical areas, and important biodiversity areas. Okay. Um, the plan should state clear actions. What do you want to do? Now you know what you've got. You know where you want to go. What do you want to do about it? What are you as a community going to do about that? So you should have clear action steps. A lot of communities kind of have broad statements like we should protect open space or we should protect our farms. And that's, you know, that's a good goal, but what does that really mean? Does it mean you're going to write a zoning law? Does it mean you're going to um, develop a critical environmental area under Seeker? What does that mean? I feel the more specific you can be in your comprehensive plan, um, the better it is for the long-term implementation of those goals. Um, offer the rationale to tie together the, um, the data that you have collected about your town, the vision about where you want your town to go, and why you're recommending a certain action. And I think this is the one place that if you're interested in uh, using your zoning for, to address this subject or any other land use subject, then um, it's really important that you 
have a, a good set of clearly written action steps that are in, implementable so that the town board can take the top five on the list and say in year one we're going to do this, this, and this. So that it's really the comprehensive plan is its own implementation schedule because otherwise the town board typically goes, whew, glad that's over, we adopted the comprehensive plan and there it sits until there's a crisis like now. You got to implement that plan in order to avoid the things you hope to avoid. Okay, um, process is really important. Now is not the time to make any kind of error in your procedures of how you adopt your comprehensive plan. Um, make sure that you read either the village or the town law um, that outlines those processes and follow it to the T. Um, you need to have make sure you have. Uh, the public hearing, there's two public hearings required for a comprehensive plan. One, if you have, uh, if you've appointed, if you're a town board and you've appointed a comprehensive plan committee, they have to have a public hearing. Legally noticed with all the bells and whistles, got to be done right. Then, when they're done, it goes to the town board. The town board has to hold its own comprehensive plan. Legally noticed, all the bells and whistles. It's got to go to the county planning board for the 239M referral, they have to have 30 days in order to review it. You can't act on that adoption until those 30 days have passed. You have to do seeker. Adoption of a comprehensive plan or updating a comprehensive plan is an automatic type one action. So you have to start with the long form or the full EAF. Um, and, and don't just whip through and check all the boxes off, no, 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 no give some rationale, tie it to your comprehensive plan, why there won't be any environmental impacts or even better that you're going to show there are beneficial impacts to the environment if you adopt your comprehensive plan. Um, make sure the papers are filed. There's a negative, if you issue a negative declaration, it's got to be filed with DEC. Make sure that gets filed. And the, um, the final step is the board um, adopts the comprehensive plan as a resolution of the board. And I get this all the time, especially when there's controversy. Invariably, someone will raise their hand and say, well, we want to have the comprehensive plan voted on by a referendum, meaning it goes out to the public as a vote. Can't do it. Uh, comprehensive plans are adopted by a resolution of the board. And that's how it works. So the board needs to have a clearly thought out resolution of why, what they've done, why adopting the comprehensive plan will be helpful, and, um, and then file the comprehensive plan with the town clerk or the village clerk and the county. So that's um, the groundwork for all of the other things that we're going to talk about later this afternoon, I believe starts with a good comprehensive plan and really think of the word comprehensive um, is, is it really should look at all aspects of your community from um, land use to agriculture, economic development, infrastructure, housing, recreation. All of those are topics that tie together to make your community what your community is. So they all need to be addressed. So I will with that a quick tour of comprehensive plans. I'll turn it over to the next speaker.